disruption. So I want to thank you. That shows a lot of respect for this board, for the administration, for Mr. Peterson, and for this process. So thank you so much. Attorney Haslam, are you ready? Okay. Mr. Peterson, you can come over to the witness stand, and the court reporter will swear you in. Mr. Peterson, I know you very well. It seems like the community knows you very well. But regardless, please go ahead and tell us a little bit about your backgrounds and what brought you to Rain School. My association with Raymond School began before I even attended the year. Um, my great uncle um, is on a plaque in the front hallway because he consolidated the area one room schoolhouses and helped find Raymond School as the site that those schools would come together and, and form what we know of as Raymond School. I attended here, my sisters attended here, they were going through eighth grade. My father was on the school board for 13 years, my aunt was on the school board. And when I was able to get my first teaching job. I returned to Raymond School and was very excited to teach here for um, seven years. I then um, was given some leadership opportunities as Mrs. Rasmussen referenced and um, became the summer school principal for the time that I was here. I coached track, I coached soccer, I was a student council advisor, very active with our students while I was working here. I had an opportunity to use my master's degree um, outside of Raymond and went to the Oak Creek Franklin School District as a middle school associate principal and young principal. While I was there, the mayor at the time gave me a mayoral proclamation that he had never get, given to a, a, a principal before for my uh, service to education in the city of Oak Creek. After Oak Creek, I was kind of recruited by all my friends in Oak Creek to go to Waukesha. I was the principal at the largest Waukesha elementary school of 600 students and we redesigned it to be a maintenance school of integrated arts, design, and creativity. While there, we became one of the first 55 schools in the country to be nationally certified, and was very excited to kind of come back to the area, worked at neighboring district as the principal and superintendent, and then when this position opened up, um, my sister had passed away um, in April that year, and then I was hired in June to be the principal. My sister was a teacher here for 20 years in the time that I wasn't here. So there's been a, a Peterson and Main School for over 50 years. So your first year back at Raymond School, not as a teacher, but as, as the principal and the first interim superintendent, correct? How was that first year? The first year was great. Um, obviously, the Raymond I left 20 years ago was different um, when I came back, but there were many things that were very similar. Uh, an excellent teaching staff, wonderfully supportive families. Um, uh, was working with a superintendent that was in a very similar model, a uh, two day a week model, I guess you call it, or he, he used to reference as, a, as uh, eight days a month. And um, we had a, a very fantastic working relationship. And the first year in a, in a school um, is, is a whole lot of getting to know things. Uh, I met with teachers, I, I had one on one with them before the school year started to kind of see what they wanted from me as their leader, what they wanted me to preserve as a cultural green school that needed to say, stay the way it was and that they enjoyed and, and flourished in. And then they also shared what they um, wanted me to start addressing right away uh, as the new leader in the building. I think 
maybe some people need to understand this is a unique situation. This is a school that has a part-time district administrator and a full-time principal. That's a model that's been here for um, the time that I've been here and previously. And so there are opportunities that um, the principal needs to have, um, you know, there are opportunities that the principal um, to do some things that are more district administrator-ish sometimes when the district administrator isn't around. We certainly need to work very closely together. Um, I would say it should feel comfortable in answering each other's texts after 10 o'clock at night and um, talking to each other in the drive-in in the morning if we hadn't had a chance to connect and stuff like that. Could you give me accolades, uh, out of boys, good, good recommendations, good reviews, either verbally or in writing during your first year? After my first year, the, the district administrator at the time was re-retiring, said that had I known that this would be the experience I would have working with you, I could keep working um, for a long, long time. We worked very well together, and he said it was actually the best year of his career. During that first year, did you feel like you fit in here? Um, I, I did, and I, I do. Uh, I, I was a student here. I, I was a teacher here, and I now the principal. Was being the principal of Raven School your career goal? <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I told our, our eighth grade graduates two years ago on the graduation day that um, whatever they were thinking of being when they were sitting in their desks at Raven School would be something that is a possibility and a reality. And my example was, and I um, assured them that many of them probably didn't have the same aspirations I did, but I distinctly remember sitting in third grade classroom um, with Mrs. Moyer and the, the principal administrator at the time walked by, and that's when I thought, I wanna, I wanna be that. And so um, it was a, a dream come true to be the principal of Raymond School. So after your, your first year, things start to change? Things did, Start to change, yes, for the worse. It, it became more challenging for sure. And again, this is not your typical principal administrator situation. This school has had multiple administrators over the years, multiple principals over the years. They can't seem to get in a groove where you can actually make effective change because there's somebody new all the time who has a different leadership idea or a different. Um, profile in terms of what they're looking for in terms of building and growing a staff. Um, and we started the year with a model of no district administrator. I had been um, given a, a contract change from Mr. Harder, a contract change to include deputy superintendent in my title and um, a, a financial increase uh, because of the value that I brought to the district. And so then, um, the director of curriculum and I had agreed with the Board of Education to kind of say, we are willing to take on that additional responsibility. So the two of us were essentially doing the role of two and a half people, I guess you'd call it, um, until we figured out what the best needs for Raymond School was. We, the, the curriculum director and I did not want this revolving door of administrators to be coming and going. You cannot impact change if you continue to replace the key players in the building. So we had said, yep, we're willing to take it on until we figure out whether we want a different leadership model. Do we want a dean of students to help with behaviors? Um, would she become more principal-ish and I become more administrator-ish? And, and we were managing the beginning of the year pretty well. So after after your first year, roughly, there was another meeting your first year. There was a, uh, an election with new board members. Was this election any different? In the past. Um, Dr. Garvey and I agreed that um, it was an interesting election because it was the first time in a long time uh, in both of our careers where there had to be a primary. Um, there were more people wanting spots where typically that's not an elementary school or a, a school board situation. You're, you're sometimes encouraging people to run for the position. So there was a primary. There were a lot of candidates. Um, I did not have any concern with the candidates. My belief is anybody who's willing to do that deserves my accolades anyway because the pay is not worthy of the work that you do um, or the scrutiny that you're under. So I didn't have any concerns with the candidates and, and I truly think I can work with a whole lot of people. My concern was the greater political picture that was happening in schools across the country. 
So what did you see going on in schools across the country that maybe gave you a little pause? Well, what was, what's interesting is that there's a, a maybe a um, not-so-positive connotation to parents being involved in school. That's not uh, an issue that I get. I grew up in Raymond, and my parents were involved in Raymond, and I had taught here for a year, and parents were very involved and should be very involved. I think if you talk to any of the parents um, in schools that I've worked with in the past, parents should be involved in their education. That includes the Board of Education. It's my job as a building leader, whether it's principal or district administrator, to support the decisions they make with all the information they would need to make a decision that's best for students. So I understand that uh, shortly after the new board took over, uh, Bulo Fetter was hired to investigate you. Is that correct? It was. Now, let's talk about this report a little bit. Yeah. This report's a little bit, the Bulo Fetter report. On, in, in our exhibit list, it is uh, exhibit number seven. Ours is the one that is not my group. So, what was the timing uh, of, of this investigation in relation to the new board members taking over? The, the typically, new boards take over in um, you know elections are sometimes in April. Um, end of April, May is their first board meetings, and then obviously the summer happens, and then um, the investigation was shortly after the next school year had started. We said it's approximately three months. Uh, yeah, uh, end of August ish, September ish. Now I saw there were, there were three, uh, excuse me, there were four uh, issues on investigation. I would like to talk to you about them at all. Okay. One of the investigation's findings was that a teacher was hired without a proper background check. Is that correct? No, that's not correct. It was an instructional assistant, a special education assistant. I, I, there, there's a, uh, Continue. That was going to say there's some context to that story. Um, obviously, those first few days back where staff are in the building but students haven't arrived yet, you're identifying who actually registered to attend school. You're looking at student records. If you have new students that haven't been in the school before, you're reviewing, um, we call them cube folders that come from other schools. Um, we had identified some very needy special education students that hadn't attended our school before. They were our uh, attendance area students. But because of COVID and some of their um, special needs, they hadn't attended here yet. So we were going to have some high need students coming the first day of school, and we we weren't set up in terms of supporting those students um, on their first day. That is always the first concern of mine: is if our students are going to come into a building and that we're ready for them and can support them. Is it true that you hired this person and they had no background check at all? Person had been. Uh, uh, a uh, person who participated in this building for at least the entire year before, almost on a, a weekly basis, if not more than that. Very familiar volunteering in our classrooms, very familiar with the staff as a whole, and um, she was even familiar with students because her, her children attended here. Um, she was hired as a substitute because the window was so short um, before the first day of school that we knew we would be going through an application process and we'd be interviewing all qualified candidates and then selecting the most qualified ones. So she came in as a substitute. She had a level one background check, which is um, a Raptor check. It's a system that does background checks here. And, and um, then we started the, the hiring process, asked for applicants and held interviews. Does the school's uh, policy manual that was in effect at the time that you did this and that's in effect at the time currently provides you with the opportunity to hire a person as long as the background check is, is imminent. Like, yeah, I think, I, I think we have that. Exactly. So it's, 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 it's one is the policy manual for criminal history record check and employee self-reporting requirements, policy number 3121. In the essence of time, I'm not going to read it, but the essence is that the district administrator or, or administrator can circumvent that process in the needs of uh, providing continuity of programming. 
as long as the uh, uh, process is going to continue. I have it right here. I'm going to read it for you. You tell me if you think this is correct. Yep. This is for the board members uh, under the subheading criminal history record check number 3121. It is the fourth paragraph. It reads, and I quote, should it be necessary to employ a person in order to maintain continuity of the program prior to the receipt of the report, the district administrator may employ the person on a provisional basis until the report is received. Is that correct? Correct, yes. And you interpret that to mean that if, if you need to hire someone, you can do it to fill an immediate need, but you're not going to just knock it on the background check. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. So, how many people were involved in this hiring process? Um, eight. I don't remember specifically. Uh, approximately eight, and they were a cross section of people in the building. Um, special education teachers would be working most closely with this instructional assistant that we were hiring because of. Um, special needs students, but um, our instructional system assistants also work with general education teachers, administrators, physical education, the specialists, um, that kind of thing. So um, we had a cross section of employees in our unit. Thank you. When did you first realize that so that there was an issue with this hiring process? Um, I don't. Mean, I don't really even think there was an issue knowing. That, um, may I rephrase? Yeah. I'm trying not to speak over you. Right. So, when did you first realize that somebody perhaps thought there was an issue with this hiring process? When I um, participated in the um, investigation. How long was that after the hire? Um, weeks to months. Let's move on to the next issue from this report. There's also an issue in the investigation uh, that you allegedly made a comment about a sixth grade student. The comments, uh, I'll give some background. The investigation says that you had been informed of, that a student's parents told the school that she had been involved in an inappropriate online relationship with an adult. Does that sound correct? It's a, it was a grandparent to share that with us. I'm trying to not be too identifiable to protect our students. When you were told that, what were your thoughts? This was a student, again, that we had no experience with. She was coming from a, a different school and was of high needs. My concern, upon hearing that from the grandmother, um, the preface was that she was very concerned about, one, the young lady was transitioning to schools. Two, that she was um, in a, a compromised emotional state because uh, a relationship with an online person had um, been ended by the grandparents. Were you concerned about, about this student? Most definitely. I think technology today is a scary place for kids to be. So the report says, and I'm going to quote the report here, the, the, the report says that uh, the person reported to the investigator that you had said, has he seen her? Well, I guess there's something for everybody. Did you say this? I did not say that. I said, the, has he seen her part? Have they ever met? Have they ever joined a, a relationship? Have they done FaceTiming or Zooming with each other? Um, the other comment is totally out of context, not something I said in reference to this student at all. So are you saying that you wanted to know if, if the relationship was just online or also in person? It was, it was a concern. It was, of course, we wanted to know as much information as we could have. Was your, was your concern that perhaps this student had suffered more trauma? The um, background information that we received was definitely a student that had experienced trauma. And because grandma was so concerned, about her starting with us because of this broken relationship, most definitely. Now let's talk about the scavenger hunt we'll talk about a little bit. So this scavenger hunt, the allegation here, the only thing that's mentioned in the report is that you told uh, teachers to take photos of students uh, in their swimming pools and in their bedroom. Is that correct? 
There was a list of about 30 opportunities for teachers to select how they wanted to earn points um, to, to win the scavenger hunt in their team. They did not have to take, um, they didn't have to earn any points. Um, they, it was optional for them to choose. And some of the um, things like um, Ms. Nehemiah referred to was, uh, you know, a, a picture on a tractor or um, uh, the side of the road where somebody sells hay out of a, a trailer. Those were opportunities for you to pick things. It was a two-hour time limit. There was no way they were going to get everything on the list. Did you see any issue with asking those questions? Uh, very similar to the teachers that have been up here. Um, I, I didn't. Um, I didn't. I, I have an additional kind of reference point. Um, I understand that people, obviously, the complainant, um, who I was never made aware of um, during the investigation or even afterwards, the complainant um, expressed concern over that. Um, Raymond School, we had a, a teacher when I was a teacher here who part of his master's program was to go to children's homes and completed his master's thesis on doing that research of being invited into families' homes. And even after completing the master's degree, he continued to do it because it was such a positive experience. It was something that, that was not uh, of concern. I am sending Raymond School teachers into the community of homes that they know. Two, two of the, the witnesses live in Raymond or have lived in Raymond. These are people that our families know and, and I never expected them to go to homes with unsupervised children. Um, one of the witnesses um, testified that they were busy texting and calling and saying, we're on our way, make sure you know you, you get on your front porch and that kind of thing because that was part of the challenge. What was the overall feedback you got immediately after the scavenger hunt from the community, the teachers, and everybody who knew anything about it? So I um, got, um, so the, the first year I was here, we did a scavenger hunt inside the building. Um, naming the schools in our conference were, were, was one of the activities. That um, activity I had never done with teachers before was so highly revered and appreciated that I created the, the additional scavenger hunt the following year. Um, scavenger hunts, team building, those things are commonplace at the beginning of a school year in schools across the country. Some of the feedback included um, a local pastor, two, two local pastors actually posted on their um, private Facebook pages that they were so happy to meet um, representatives of the school and um, hoped that there would be closer relationships working forward with the school and the churches. Um, some parents asked teachers, wait, 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 can I come with you guys? Can I finish the scavenger hunt with you? Um, teachers, Ms. Nehemiah mentioned it. Um, there's social media posts that, um, that one teacher commented. Go ahead, sorry. May I interrupt you? I would, this like, is to, you. I would like to direct the, the board and everyone with a copy of my exhibits to exhibit number 14, copies of the social media posts uh, that Mr. Peterson, that Principal Peterson is referring to. Go ahead, Mr. Peterson. So um, one of the, the teachers um, posted on her, her page that it was the best day of professional development that she had experienced in her 20-something years of, of teaching. She got to know new teachers, she got to know new staff members, and she got to know um, people that she hadn't worked closely with before, even though they may have worked together for a, a period of time. Um, it, there was, I think, probably three or five-ish um, pieces of feedback that are documented here that were highly positive. And, and even going through the comments on these people's pages where um, other relatives thought it was great. Teachers in other districts commented that it was amazing. Some of Raymond retiring, retired teachers said, shoot, we wish we would have done that before we went back in. Are you proud of, of it at first? I, I, was, I was extremely proud of the um, effects of the scavenger hunt that I thought exceeded the team building that I had predicted. When was the first time you had ever realized that somebody had taken an issue? We, we received a, a text. Uh, I received a text. I did not go. I was kind of um, 
making sure that the vehicles got out safely and timing came back and things like that. So I stayed in the building. Um, had gotten a text from um, one of our administrative assistants, Nikki Hughes, that somebody had showed up at her house and um, her father was living with her and he didn't know what was going on. And he, would, he was concerned about people coming to the house and didn't understand how come they were there trying to take pictures and earn points and that kind of thing. So he had um, alerted her and she had alerted me. Do you think maybe there's any other reason that she would have been upset with you about this? Nikki was um, home with COVID that week. Um, it was, the, for a principal, the, the professional development week is one of our busiest times of the year um, because we're the ones teaching teachers that week. Um, it's important.